Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss about the anti-thyroid agents. Hyperthyroidism is one of the condition where there is an excessive release of the thyroid hormones like the T3 and T4. And sometimes this disorder may also result because of the autoimmune disorder. For example, the Graves disease, excessive thyroid hormones are going to be released, which results in the hyperthyroidism. Particularly in the hyperthyroidism, the basic metabolic rate is going to be increased because of the increased levels of the thyroid hormones, which may result in the variable effects on our physiological system. Generally, fatigue is observed in the patients and because of the increased levels of the thyroid hormones, irritability and nervousness is observed in the patients. And it also affects the heart to produce a regular heartbeat. So palpitations can be observed, which may be irregular. And insomnia, lack of sleep is another important disorder that can be observed with the hyperthyroidism. And apart from these symptoms, it can also produce a tremor in the patients, diarrhea. It can alter the movement of the bowel, which results in the diarrhea and protrusion of the eyeballs particularly graves disease is associated with the protrusion of eyeballs so that's why it is called as exophthalmic hyperthyroidism and other symptoms like muscle weakness and hyperthermia can be observed with the hyperthyroidism that's why thyroid hormone levels should be strictly controlled in order to prevent the dysfunction of the many of the organs so today in this video let us see what are the anti-thyroid agents that can be used to control the hyperthyroidism so what are the various approaches to control the hyperthyroidism? When our thyroid hormones are excessively released because of the enlargement of the thyroid gland, we can use the radiation therapy which use the radioiodine, iodine-131 that releases the beta radiation which cause the destruction of the thyroid globules, thereby it can decrease the hyperthyroidism. Otherwise, the thyroid gland can be surgically removed such that we can prevent the excessive release of the thyroid hormones. And finally, we can use the anti-thyroid agents which are going to inhibit the synthesis of the thyroid hormones within the thyroid follicles. So in this video, let us discuss the anti-thyroid agents. So what are the anti-thyroid agents? Based on the type of use, these anti-thyroid agents can be classified into two types. The drugs which are used for the treatment of the hyperthyroidism, otherwise the drugs which are used as adjuvants. Adjuvants are the drugs which are used either pre or post operatively either to reduce the size of the thyroid hormone or to prevent what are the side effects during the surgical removal of the thyroid glands. And we can use the beta blockers like the propranol and nadolol which are non-selective beta blockers which are going to block the beta 1 receptors on the cardiac system thereby they prevent the cardiac stimulation by thyroid hormones. Similarly, we can use the glucocorticoids like the prednisolone which can control the inflammation and calcium channel blockers like the verapamil which can control the blood pressure. And finally, the iodide, the excessive iodide can be given as a logal solution to decrease the size of the thyroid gland such that it can be removed by the surgery. In this way, we can use few of the drugs which are used as adjuvants. But here the logal solution can also be used in the thyroid storm in order to reduce the excessive symptoms. Then what are the drugs which are used for the treatment of the hyperthyroidism? So here the antithyroid agents mainly used for the treatment are the thiourlines. So now the antithyroid agents are mainly used for the treatment of the hyperthyroidism and they are chemically classified as thiourlines. So what are the thiourlines? You can see that this is the structure of the thiourea and if we are going to modify this thiourea and we are going to close the ring either with a 5 membered or 6 membered ring system then they can produce the thiourlines. So here you can see this is one type of uh, drugs where the thiourea is going to be closed with a 6 membered ring system. And this is having the uracil like structure. So this is nothing but the 2 thiouracil. Similarly, second type of drugs are having the thiourea, which is closed as a 5 member ring system. And here, what are the ring system is the imidazole. So this is nothing but the 2 thiouimidazole. So this is the first one, propyl thiouracil. You can observe it is having the uracil structure with a propyl side chain at the sixth position. So this is the 6 propyl 2 thiouracil. Similarly, this is the ender structure which is having an imidazole nucleus with a thiol group at the second position. This is nothing but the methimidazole. So methimidazole is nothing but the 1-methyl 2-thioimidazole. Similarly, second one is the carbimidazole. Carbimidazole is having the similar structure with a ethyl carboxylate ester at the one of the nitrogen. So that is a carbimidazole. So these are the three drugs which are used as anti-thyroid agents. Now let us see how these antithyroid agents can inhibit the synthesis of the thyroid hormones. 
So this is the plasma and this is the thyroid follicle and this is the lumen of the thyroid follicle which is having the colloid. Now from the plasma iodide is going to be absorbed into the follicle where it is going to iodinate the tyrosine residues to produce the thyroid hormones. But here one of the important step is the uptake of the iodide. So one of the pump present here is the NIS sodium iodide transporter. And another pump is also present on the inner membrane. So this is a pendrin protein which is going to uptake the iodide at the inner membrane. Now the iodide can be transported along with the sodium into the follicles. And within the thyroid follicle, the thyroglobulin is present which is attached with the tyrosine residues. These tyrosine residues can be iodinated by the iodide. Now the iodine molecule can attach to this tyrosine residue such that uh, Either one iodide molecule can be attached to the one tyrosine residue, otherwise the two iodide molecules can be attached to the one tyrosine residue. And this reaction is mediated by thyroperoxidase enzyme and this enzyme is responsible for the iodination of the tyrosine residues in presence of hydrogen peroxide. Now in presence of thyroperoxidase enzyme, tyrosine residues are going to be iodinated such that they can form the monoiodinated tyrosine residues or diiodinated tyrosine residues which we have represented here with the letters M and D. Now this thyroglobulin can be secreted into the thyroid follicle along with the monoiodinated and diiodinated tyrosine residues. But within the thyroid follicle one of the enzymes is the lysosome which is responsible for the dissolution of these thyroid globulins to release the free iodinated tyrosine residues. And in the next step thyroglobulin can undergo the endocytosis and it can be present in the lysosome which produce the cleavage of this tyrosine residues. Now here monoiodinated tyrosine as well as diiodinated tyrosine can be combined. Otherwise one molecule of the diiodinated tyrosine and another molecule of the diiodinated tyrosine can be combined. So when the two molecules of the diiodinated tyrosine residues are going to be joined they can produce a T4 which is going to be secreted into the plasma. Similarly, a monoiodinated and a diiodinated tyrosine residues can produce a T3 which can be secreted into the plasma. In this way, T4 and T3 are going to be secreted into the plasma from these iodinated tyrosine residues. Now let us see what is the action of these thiourulins. Thiourulins can inhibit one of the important crucial steps. They can inhibit the thyroperoxidase enzyme activity. By inhibition of this enzyme, they can inhibit the iodination of the tyrosine residues which inhibits the biosins of the thyroid hormones. But peripherally, the T4 can also be converted to T3 which is going to be blocked by one of the drug PTU, propyl thiouracil. So propyl thiouracil can inhibit the conversion of the T4 to T3 within the peripheral tissues. Now already we have seen that for sins of the thyroid hormones, two important molecules are required. One is iodide. And second is the tyrosine. This tyrosine can interact with the iodide in presence of the thyroperoxidase enzyme which undergoes the iodination. But this step is a free radical mechanism. Initially iodide is converted to iodide free radical and this reaction is mediated by thyroperoxidase enzyme in presence of hydrogen peroxide. And the same enzyme will convert the tyrosine into the tyrosine free radical. You can observe the hydrogen is going to be removed and a tyrosine free radical is going to be produced. Now this tyrosine free radical as well as the iodide free radical can be combined such that they are going to produce the iodinated tyrosine. So this is the mono iodinated tyrosine. In this way they can also prepare the diiodinated tyrosine. So here thyroperoxidase enzyme is important for the iodination of the tyrosine residues which is blocked by thiourulins. So thiourulins are going to inhibit the iodination of the tyrosine residues. What are the side effects? These antithyroid agents can produce few of the common side effects like the headache, nausea and vomiting, joint pains. And apart from these common side effects, they can produce the two important side effects. One is the neutropenia and another one is the granulocytosis. This neutropenia, the decrease in the neutrophil count can produce few of the symptoms in the patients such as fever, sore throat and chills. Similarly, granulocytosis can produce the rapid heartbeat and jaundice in the patients. So whenever these two side effects are observed, the antithyroid agents should be carefully given. So that's about the antithyroid agents. Propylthiouracil, methimzole and carbimzole are the antithyroid agents which are belonging to the thiourulins. Propylthiouracil is having the uracil structure whereas uh, 
carbamazole and methimazole are having the thioemidazole ring system these drugs are going to inhibit the iodination of the tyrosine residues by inhibition of the thyroperoxidase enzyme within the thyroid follicles but propyl thiouracil can also inhibit the conversion of the t4 to t3 into the peripheral tissues but still propyl thiouracil can produce a hepatotoxicity so it is somewhat toxic compared with the carbamazole and methimazole so that's about these antithyroid agents hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video